المسلمين بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ولا واتبعوا في إحسان يوم الدين أما الله الله عز وجل هو يقول في القرآن واتسموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تطرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأسبحتم بنعمته إخوانا I once, um, I was telling uh, Sheikh Ibrahim tonight, I once took a class in uh, public speaking, a class about how to give the khutbah, how to speak in front of uh, a group. And one thing I left that class with that was very, very impressive, that the teacher said, one of the things you should always do is you should lift the people to Allah. When you start talking, lift the people to Allah. And before you finish that talk, make sure you put their feet back on the ground so that they can go to work Monday morning. Listen, brothers and sisters, I'm honored to be one of the first African-Americans here. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever calls to a good thing, he gets an equal share of everybody that benefits by that. I intend to be here. Brother Chajamal, I intend to be here. I am been. I intend, Brother Imam, to hope to see all of you here to see you all working. Because we all have a fundamental problem that we need. We lay in the foundation and God of Kufr. Can you believe that? We lay in the foundation. I am the grandson of a Baptist minister who had 13 children. My mother was a baby. tradition that happened in the Prophet's house and Sheikh Ibrahim can testify to me and verify this particular point there was a slave girl her name was Barela she was sent to the Prophet's house to work in his house to take some benefit off of the family. Listen, whenever the Quran or the Hadith is pointing something to us, it's painting a picture. It's painting a picture. And you have to learn to look at things in the picture language. 
so that you can receive the message. So let's go back to the point. So the slave girl was sent to the prophet's house, so the lovely was summer, there to work. Well, she got pretty familiar with our mother, Aisha, for on the alumni time. And she said to Aisha, she said, listen, will you pay for my manumission? Would you pay for me to go free from my owners? Aisha said, if you like. She said, okay. One narration says that Aisha said to them, listen, I will pay nine copias, nine standards, in order for you to go free. She said, on top of that, your owners have to stipulate. This is important, brothers and sisters. Your owners have to stipulate that when I pay those annual fees for you, that I can also inherit from you. Barrera was ecstatic. She went to her owners and told them what Aisha said, on the alone, that she will pay for me if you will accept nine or six standards of payment annually. And that you have to sign that she has the right to inherit from you. The owner said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go back and tell my Asian, on the alone, we'll take the standards of payment but she don't get the right to inherit from you. We are your owners. And this hadith is in Imam Bukhari's collection for anybody that wants to read it. The Prophet came home, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I told you, brothers and sisters, we're painting a picture. Look at the picture. The Prophet came home, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but rather went to the Prophet crying, telling him, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I asked Aisha, she said yes. My owner said, okay, they'll take that, but not the inheritance. The prophet didn't say anything. Back to Barrera. He went and he made Wudu. And when he made Wudu, Aisha came and told him the same exact thing that Barrera had just told him. And this is the key. This is the key. And I really, really want you to remember this particular principle. The Prophet went on the member, sallallahu he glorified Allah, and he sent salutations on his Prophet, sallallahu and he asked the question that we want to ask ourselves. He said, what is the matter with people? What is wrong with them? That they make sharupa, they make conditions, that are not in the book of Allah. And they're not in the sunnah of his messenger. So Allah Listen, I told you that I came from a Christian family. I came looking for the light. Looking for the light of Islam. Hmm? I came through the back door with Elijah Muhammad's Dawah. Like most African Americans. The problem that my people are suffering from is to connect to the Prophet. So the love of our son. That's what my people are suffering from. Many of you, you're from Pakistan, you're from the Arab lands, you're from places. Yes, you're suffering with something too. What is that that you're suffering from? You're suffering from innovation behind mixing with other people behind mixing with other people. What we have got to do, all of us, and listen, you have got to make sure that the African-American community, that you mix with them. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever's not concerned about the Ummah of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's not from us. مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ Anyone, anyone who brings something in the matter of Allah and His Messenger that is not from Allah and His Messenger will have it rejected. Now we have the job, all of us, to Islamicize our lifestyle and to be mindful and careful about the people that
have been mixing with. Look, when the Arabs went to Spain, they married their women. And look what happened. If you look in Spain now, the only thing you see is the remnant of buildings that's left. No, we have a job of making America a Muslim land. And that's what we have to get busy with. And we have to find the ways. And all of us, all of us are the ambassadors of Islam. Right down to my little brother. Everybody is looking at the Muslim. I don't care where you are. You're in the supermarket. You're in the bank. You're at the gas station. They're looking at us. Listen to the second thing that I wanted to share with you tonight. And I am amazed. I'm amazed by it. You know, I met Sheikh Al-Qaimim, Rahimullah, in 1981. I had just become a police officer for the city of Newark. So I went to Mecca, and a brother took us, a group of us, a Bhutsana, a Vlaha, Hafizullah. He took us to Sheikh Al-Qaimim's quarters. Let me tell you what happened that really blew my mind. We were on the outside of the sheikh's office, and there was a line all the way down around the top just to come see Sheikh Otaimi. I didn't know who Sheikh Otaimi was. So we came to the door, and my friend knocked on the door. One of the students opened the thing, and he said, Yes. He said, Could you tell the sheikh that the Americans are here? He said, Do you have an appointment? He said, Just go tell the sheikh that the Americans are here. I thought that that was kind of arrogant. Just go tell the Sheikh, you know, I'll get before you. There were a group of Arabs that were sitting down, they were like maybe 40 people in front of them, for them to come in to meet the Sheikh. One of the Arabs got up and he came to the brother and he said, uh, listen, he said, we've been here for a while. Can we attach ourselves to your group and go in with you? My man said, Absolutely not. And I'm still looking at my friends saying, wow, man, why are you so hard on these guys? You know, they just want to see the shape. The next thing I know, the student came back and he opened the door. When he opened the door, I was like blown away like, wow, only thing he said was, tell them, tell the shape that the Americans are here. So we came in and there was this huge office. I knew Sheikh Al-Tamim, Rahimullah, he had an office. And there was every kind of people you ever wanted to meet. There were the scholars from Russia. There were the scholars from Afghanistan. There were the scholars from that part of the world, from India. Everybody was there, they wanted to meet the Sheikh. And they had like a strong circle around. And everybody was sitting down. The Sheikh took the Americans. The Americans. And he brought the Americans. And we didn't have no academic scholarship. There was no scholar among us. They had big scholars. Big scholars. The Prophet said, so the Lord, he said that the scholars are like the stars in the night compared to the moonlight. I thought that this was a profound statement of the Messenger of Allah, that the scholars are like the stars in the night compared to the moonlight. The Sheikh invited us to come into his office, into the inner office, where all of those people were out there sitting and waiting. So I, did, I had just started to learn Arabic, just started to learn Arabic. So I turned to the Sheikh and I said to him, in broken Arabic. I said, Sheikh, I'm an African American. I'm a police officer. I said, is it permissible for me to be the police officer in the land of the disbelievers? What blew my mind was the Sheikh didn't say Allah. He didn't say Allah Rasul. He said, just don't oppress the Muslims. When I left out of the office, I said to myself, wow, this is a big time shame. And that's all he got to say. He don't say anything else. 
But I sat there and I thought about how the scholars asked. Look what he did. He took the idea that chicken, chicken does, or him Allah, opposed him all. Sheikh Al-Qaimim said it's permissible for a Muslim to go into policing, but it's not permissible for a Muslim to side with the army of the Quran. You can't go in the Navy, you can't go in the Marines, you can't go into the Air Force, and you can't go into the army. Both of them agree. Why? Because the person who goes into the army is under somebody's orders about killing. Killing. This is the principle that he disagreed with Sheikh Nabas about. He said that the police officer doesn't have to kill. There are some instances he has to, but not all of them. There are some instances he has to kill. Therefore, the principle, the also of the idea is law, oppression. We know the hadith from the Prophet وسلم, that he said on the day of Yom Al-Qiyam that the oppressor will come up with a darkness. He won't have a light. He won't have a light. Look at this. This is a fundamental thing that Allah has put in his creation. You know, in the nighttime, in the summer, we all see the moth. The moth flies to the light. If he doesn't find the light, He'll fly anus. I said to Brother uh, Torajan today, Allah is going to make us successful. Why is He going to make us successful? Look at what we're doing. This is for the pleasure of Allah. Allah mentions in the ayat in Surah Al Talaq, whoever puts their trust in Allah. And where is our trust? It's in our actions. Whoever put their trust in Allah, he will make a way out for them from where they couldn't imagine. No, you don't have the ability to imagine. Huh? Brother Tony, don't worry about it. Allah has taken care of this side. He brought us all here by his pleasure. In closing, Allah said in the Quran, He said that the deed that is done for Allah's pleasure. Is as though it was one grain of corn. One grain produces seven ears. On each ear is a hundred grains. How do you think that the man who killed a hundred people, how do you get to go to paradise? When the Prophet told us, so Allah, so Allah won't forgive you for what you do to somebody else. He won't forgive you. It's up to those people to forgive. This man killed a hundred people. And he gets to go to paradise? Yes. Why? Because ultimately, what he did for Allah, Allah knows it. Allah knows it. We're doing great work. We're doing great work. This is one of the houses. This is one of the houses that Allah puts his light inside of. And as long as we work together and stay with our scholars, we're going to be all right. No matter what you're going through, I don't care what it is. You know, we have sickness, we have stress, we have this virus, we have the racial relationships. No matter what we're going through, Turning to Allah and putting our trust in Him and trying to do our best. Our weakest link, our weakest link is our children. And we have to make sure that our children get this Quran. Because without the Quran, without the Son of the Prophet, we're going nowhere. Nowhere. Brothers, I want to close with a supplication that the Prophet وسلم, always made. And this is a thing that no matter where we go, we always have to try to remember this. Rabbana, lulamna, and fusana, wa inam taqfir lana, wa tarhamna, lana kunana, minat khawasirin. Rabbana, 
لا تزق لبنا بعد اذ هديته وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت ونستغفرك ونتوب اليك